So, so for the last bit of uh, collection of sorting algorithms we're going to look at, they are not entirely comparison based. They are based on comparing the elements in the array, maybe some reference number or some other number. Um, and so the bounds of those two theorems we did on uh, comparison based sorting algorithms, where you're comparing elements of the array to each other, those bounds may or may not apply here. We will talk about bucket sort. Bucket sort is actually not one particular algorithm, rather, it's a family of algorithms that have certain common properties. And the simplest uh, idea of bucket sort is actually exemplified by counting sort. What's the idea of bucket sort? Imagine you have to sort a lot of balls. Um, there are uh, you know, a lot of balls uh, with numbers from 1 to 200. And what you could do is to ease your task, you make 10 buckets, let's say. All the balls from numbers from 1 to 20, put them in one bucket. 21 to 40, put them in the second bucket, and so on and so forth. And then now each bucket has few numbers, then you sort them individually. And the idea is that each bucket, everybody in that bucket comes before everybody in this bucket. So if you sort this bucket, followed by this bucket, followed by this bucket, you already have the whole array sorted. Okay? So just to, uh, to demonstrate this uh, on the board, let's say you have you know an array, and the numbers look like um, let's say the numbers are from one to hundred for now. 5, 18, 35, 6, uh, and so on and so forth, and this could be like say 12, right? So what you do is you the first pass, the numbers that are from 1 to 10 should be here, 11 to 20, and uh, 91 to 100, okay? So when you go through this, the first phase, you will end up with things like 5 will be here, 6 will be here, 18 will be here, 35 will be in a proper bucket, uh, eight, uh, 94 will be here, and so on and so forth. Um, there are a lot of details here that we are not doing because we are not talking about a specific idea. I am talking about a general idea of bucket sort. So remember when somebody says do a just a, some kind of bucket sorter, they mean a bucket sort that is appropriate to your situation. Uh, what kind of bins to make, but one thing has to be kept in mind, the bins should be in such a way that once I sort these guys now, 5, 6, 8, then these guys, 12, 18, uh, 20, these guys, these guys, and then I combine the list as it is, it's already sorted, right? So everybody here should be bigger than everybody here, and everybody here should be bigger than everybody here, and so on and so forth. If the buckets are in sorted order, um, and then you sort individual buckets. Any such algorithm that works this way is called a bucket sort. Why is counting sort of a special case of that? You can think of it, the bucket is of size 1. You are basically putting all the 1's together. How do you put all the 1's together? You just count how many 1's there are, how many 2's there are, how many 3's there are, and so on and so forth, and then write them. How do you sort all the 1's in the one bucket of 1's? Well, you just write them one next to each other because they are all equal value. So counting sort can be seen as the most elementary example of bucket sort, but the bucket is of size 1. Okay? But that's not that interesting. Let's talk about actual, uh, where you actually have buckets with multiple ranges. Okay? Um, we will talk about uh, an algorithm called Redding sort. And there are two variations of this. Um, most significant uh, digit version and least significant digit version. Okay. Let's talk about the most significant digit version. The word radix refers to root um, and here it refers to the base. So just as an example, let's say the list we need to sort is 329 
I'm writing the array vertically instead of writing it horizontally. So if I were to use the radix or most significant digit version, these numbers are written in base name, base 10, so that's why it's most significant digit. If this was in base 2, then most significant bit, and so on and so forth. So I will focus on the most significant thing and I'll sort these guys. So let's see what's the lowest, what's the lowest, what's the lowest? It's this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. Fours are done. You have 657, you have 720, and you have 839. This is make sure it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right. So the, the first or the most significant digits are sorted. Then you move on to the second most significant digits. Okay? Um, this is not bad. If you were to stop the, the radix sort right here, at least it's a rough ordering, like all the 300 somethings are before all the 400 somethings. So it's kind of like bucket sort actually. But what happens now if you sort by these digits? So the lowest ones are so 3 to 9 is 2, then the next 2 is 720, then you know, then 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 6. This is messed up, right? This is going to mess up the order. What you need to do, this is not going to work unless you make buckets. So all the 300 should be together, the 400s, the 600s, the 700s. And within the 300s, you sort them by second digit. So this is already sorted, this is already sorted, then 436 in this bucket, then 457. You see that these swap because 5 is bigger than so on and so forth, um, and so on and so forth. And then, if you had like, some more numbers in here, then when you go further here, you would have to make buckets by the second digit to sort the third digit. So, most significant digit version of radix sort is a great example of bucket sort. And every time you have to maintain the buckets, you have to think about data structures to use, how you to maintain those, and you have buckets within buckets as you go into further digits. Okay? This is called the most significant digit version of bucket sort, uh, radix sort, and you have to make sure you do the sorting by subsequent digit within the bucket. If you were to sort across the thing, it's going to mess up, then you'll have 329 followed by 730, followed by 436, followed by 839, followed by 457, which doesn't make sense. Okay? In the next video, we'll talk about the least significant digit version.